At one point in our lives, I think we've all had the dream of starting up your own YouTube channel. Some are enticed by dreams of fame and easy monetary gain. They never seem to get far. But others are driven by the pure passion for content creation and having your voice heard by millions of people. And back in 2015, Turkey Tom was no different. In early high school, Tom was like any other teenage boy at the time, enchanted by the fledgling commentary community made up of creators like Leafy, Pyrocynical, and H3H3. It's a subgenre of YouTubers defined by their opinionated videos commentating on the same cringe content or current YouTube drama, often revolving around other members of the community. Usually the videos were produced near daily with extremely simplistic visuals and an unscripted off-the-cuff narration style where the creator's often irreverent personalities were the star of the show. This toxic subgenre and the sense of community around it inspired Tom to start his own commentary channel. The following is a rant by me, Turkey Tom. At the beginning, his videos were extremely amateurish. They fit the broad definition of commentary videos, but even early on, Tom was smart enough to differentiate himself from the saturated niche by choosing to speak over drawings as well as the trademark unrelated gameplay footage. The simple illustrations, paired with awful audio quality, lends these early videos a, a certain charm. They feel like what they are, a kid emulating his online idols. But something that really set Tom apart from the average story of a bright-eyed kid making videos for fun was, despite their rugged nature, you could tell he was very ambitious with these sub-1000 view videos. With all the original art, high effort editing, and just the pure consistency of uploads. From the very beginning, Tom was obsessed with YouTube. Neglecting schoolwork to hang out in Skype chats with other small commentary YouTubers who had their own completely irrelevant drama to make videos on, using any free time to work on more and more videos. I remember there was this one moment when I was like 15 years old. I had like failed a math test or something. My mom was like, this YouTube thing is getting in the way. And I remember being at the family computer and she was like looking up how to delete a YouTube channel. And I was like, no, I had like 500 subscribers and I unplugged the fucking thing from the wall. She's like, what are you doing? And I was like, don't do this to me. And this dedication eventually started to bear fruit. By 2018, Tom's videos had improved immensely. His videos were more akin to video essays than the usual lazy, unscripted commentary videos at the time. He attempted to approach topics with a level of nuance, acknowledging positives and offering constructive criticisms to the creators he covered. Early on, as well as the commentary format, Tom also made videos that took a lot of inspiration from I Hate Everything, covering more broad topics outside of the commentary niche, like movie reviews and general rants. But it started to become clear the videos that performed best would always be those criticizing other creators. Tom's first video to do especially well was his criticism of the YouTube cartoon or fewer community. The video was focused largely on the mysterious Mr. Enter, one of the biggest and most infamous channels in the scene. Mr. Enter became somewhat of a reoccurring character on Tom's channel, with the two of them making videos back and forward over the course of three years. Initially, Tom criticized Enter for his incredibly lazily edited and melodramatic reviews, but the drama eventually culminated with Tom's video lambasting Enter for his failed Kickstarter for an animated project entitled Growing Around. In the video, Tom took his criticisms further, making some somewhat tasteless jokes insinuating Enter was a predator based off the sus concept of the series. This along with several hate videos from other YouTubers ended up with Mr. Enter making a response video crying over the ceaseless hate he was receiving, for really no other reason than being a little cringe. After this, every creator that ever talked shit came out with their tails between their legs to apologize for ever saying anything mean to him. But even early on, Tom showed both backbone and maturity by apologizing for his extreme predator comments, but stuck by his utter, more objective criticism. But anyway, with the initial video's success, Tom slowly began gaining relevance. At this point, Tom's name carried enough clout that his words would be noticed by larger figures within the commentary community. And he got his first taste of this when he made a tweet criticizing fellow commentary creator Kavos for his lazy content, resulting in him getting roasted by Keemstar, birthing this iconic clip. And why is your name Turkey Tom, but you're not a turkey? Despite Tom's videos getting dislike bombed by the Keem army, this also brought more attention to his channel and got him featured on Tommy C's live show. At this point, his content had improved enough to capitalize on the exposure, but his own response Response and other videos beginning to gain a generous amount of views. This point is also when he was noticed and began forming connections with other big creators in the niche, cementing Tom as an active player within the commentary community. Tom's videos now had enough sway to reach the eyes of creators he criticized and impact their perception online. That's a lot of power for a teenager, but Tom didn't get into YouTube for influence. He got into it because he loved making videos and sharing his honest opinions no matter how controversial they may be. 
In 2019, Tom would upload his next especially notable video, Criticism Not Welcome, where he went after the then rapidly exploding storytime animation niche on YouTube. This video is a notably aggressive criticism of the community that put into words a lot of what viewers were feeling at the time, and resulted in it becoming his first video to surpass 1 million views. Even having some of the Storytime channels criticized actually listen to the critiques given and improve their content because of it. Notably, Speechy, the creator who was the main focus of the video, that Tom went especially hard on, lambasting her videos for lazy artwork and her childish rejection of criticism, as well as showing his more provocative side, questioning her self-diagnosed depression and joking about her being, well, fat, <laughs> with Tom comparing her to the Michelin Man on Twitter. He later realized this was probably a little far and apologized for it later. There are points during which I've said, hey, I shouldn't have called that self-conscious girl fat. I probably should have acknowledged it in my video. I shouldn't have compared her to the Michelin Man. I shouldn't have joked about this guy being a pedophile and then had the jokes fall flat. But there are other points where I say, oh wait, this guy is fucking dumb. But this brash approach to content was starting to become a core aspect of Tom's online persona. I mentioned earlier how Tom's content style was influenced by creators like I Hate Everything and Leafy. But when it came to the humor in those videos, Tom's influences are very different. It's clear he admired, for example, frequent collaborator Mumkey Jones for his edgy, envelope-pushing videos, and even more so, Sam Hyde, an internet darling for those of us with a more subversive taste in comedy. Despite his infamous reputation, Sam's a very obvious inspiration for many creators who now want nothing to do with him, like h 3 h and funnily enough even iDubs. And Tom wasn't shy to let his controversial humor show in his videos, especially at this time. Although like his influences, these are just jokes at the end of the day. The intent's to make you laugh, not to seriously hurt groups or diminish the serious topics they base humor off. But when you play with fire, sometimes you get burned. And in 2020, these edgy jokes caught the ire of one D'Angelo Wallace. When D'Angelo saw Tom's more off-color jokes in his YouTube sponsorships video, he was offended enough to make multiple videos attacking Tom over it, cherry-picking comments under the video, and leaking DMs out of context to portray Tom as a racist. And this is where the connections Tom formed within the commentary community really came to help him, with several other creators, such as Willing Mac Show and Nicholas DiOrio, making videos to defend Tom and point out D'Angelo's bad faith arguments. At the end of the day, the only legitimate criticism was Tom's use of certain gamer words, which depends on the person, but I feel considering the intent was obviously humor in jest, uh, it's more than forgivable. Here, Tom had his first taste of serious backlash from a big creator, and he navigated the situation tactfully, a notch in the belt for any commentary channel considering how many online can dish out criticism but start crying like babies, striking videos, and deleting comments as soon as they take any heat themselves. By 2020, Tom's videos start to take on the level of quality he's known for today. Graduating from the I Hate Everything inspired talking PNGs over erratically edited clips to a more thoughtful, restrained visual and narration style, which is highly polished and flows together nicely. He continued his commentary videos on currently developing drama, but was also beginning to create videos more akin to mini-documentaries, objectively looking back at the careers of past internet figures and communities. And these were becoming really successful. As I mentioned earlier, when your channel grows to a big enough size, you gain influence. The power to affect how figures are perceived. And sometimes this power can be intoxicating. It can drive YouTubers to go beyond petty internet beefs and, for better or worse, take a more journalistic approach with their content, breaking stories on serious allegations and using their audience to carry out a sort of vigilante justice. Tom had made multiple more serious videos of this nature before, notably his video exposing the false SA allegations of fellow commentary creator Slazo, and the slew of YouTubers who minusly slandered him for crimes he didn't commit, like Weiss, Dolan Dark, and the local slimy little rat I'm Alex. But this time, Tom is going even further beyond. This time, he would be the one leading the charge, exposing a creator for immoral actions. When in December of 2020, Tom uploaded the first in a series of three videos exposing Pyrocynical for supposedly grooming one of his underage fans. The videos and Google document Tom published on the situation were filled with really bad fate interpretations and dubious evidence. This sort of stuff can be forgiven in a typical drama video, but when it comes to potentially life-ruining allegations like this, it's just inexcusable. From the start, Tom had big pushback on these videos, but after Pyro made his official response video, definitively disproving the grooming allegations, and Tom proceeded to double down on his claims, shit really hit the fan. The Pyro situation was an absolute mess, and several other creators made videos defaming Pyro during this time. But Tom being the one to publish most of the evidence and make the first big exposed videos caught the majority of the backlash. For what it's worth, 
Tom definitely didn't have malicious intent with this stuff. At least I don't think so. I think he genuinely believed the horrible things Pyro was being accused of and wanted to do his part to bring his supposed predator to justice. But ultimately, Tom and the majority of the commentary community fell into the same trap he condemned Slazo's accusers of, running with false allegations before the accused had their chance to properly respond, and they ended up with egg on their face. Tom was now put in the same position as the infamous figures he made videos on. His content and personal messages were flooded with a relentless onslaught of dislikes and negative comments while he started to bleed subs rapidly, only getting worse with each subsequent upload. And then one day, at the peak of the vitriol, Tom just… vanished. He went completely dead silent. At first, it seemed like he had cracked under the pressure. Unable to handle such extreme criticism, Tom gave up on his dreams of YouTube, but then, three months later, Tom returned with a new video, totally ignoring the drama and returning to business as usual, with a unrelated video criticizing Minecraft YouTubers for their fake PC personas. And this video was met with large pushback, its comments filled with people still in rage over the pyro situation, and it got a significant amount of dislikes. But Tom still didn't respond. Then he uploaded another video the next day, and the next, and the next. By the end it became clear he didn't give up, but rather used the time to make 7 whole ass high quality videos posted one after another over the course of a week. He was intent to let the drama simply blow over. Tom had no intention of making a public apology or engaging with the random commenters demanding he repent. He simply decided to let the content speak for itself. He presumably made amends with Pyro behind the scenes. And Tom knew that on YouTube, you can mess up at times. Hell, you can even be a bad person. But if you make great content that people want to see, you will succeed no matter what. I read about it's kind of crazy to think about, but during all this, Tom was still in high school. And by the time he graduated, he was well past the 100k subscriber milestone and steadily growing with more and more videos of ever increasing quality. But eventually, during COVID, when there was more success to be gained online than any other point in history, Tom had to slow down and go to college. Tom's life got split in two, stuck in a course he didn't care about while his success on YouTube was growing wildly. So Tom was left with two choices. He could continue down the average path of slogging through years of education for the hope of finding a boring job while only being able to occasionally make videos as a hobby. Or he could go all in, risk it all on following his lifelong passion and achieving the dream of becoming a professional YouTuber. Eventually, something broke, and Tom started skipping classes, locking himself in his dorm room, slamming monster after monster, and locked the heck in, creating more and more high quality videos with each passing month. He expanded his channel, hiring script writers, editors, and massively upped his upload consistency till finally he made enough to justify dropping out and achieving the dream of every kid nowadays becoming a professional YouTuber. Now dedicating all his time to YouTube, Tom's videos reached their current quality, fully moving away from the traditional commentary videos and focusing on more professional documentary-like videos covering YouTubers, other online figures, and scandals, many of which could be considered the definitive videos on those topics. With this new content approach, Tom's channel skyrocketed past 1 million subscribers by the end of 2023. He also launched his second channel around this time, Tom Dark, where he returned to the more basic, leafy-style commentary videos, a now nostalgic genre of the past, where he could show his personality like in his earlier work. And he is held true to the constant innovation that set him apart from other commentary channels in the first place, expanding into live streaming, and is even incorporating in-person interviews with the subjects he covers, similar to the iDubs documentaries from back in the day. Overall, Tom is a creator that has a genuine, relatable love for YouTube, evident in his insane work ethic and continuous striving for improvement. Despite his controversial moments, he managed to overcome every setback threatening his channel, and at this point has planted his flag at the peak of the commentary community alongside the fairy names that inspired that weird terminally online high school kid all those years ago.